All right, so today's lab has to do with corn. And you're thinking, corn, hooray, corn is uh, uh, kind of a boring thing. But corn can actually be kind of interesting. For example, uh, corn has multiple phenotypes. And if you can see, we've got this beautiful kind of red and um, dark red corn here. And then we've got um, this really cool uh, multi-colored uh, corn cob with some um, lots of different phenotypes actually in here. We've got your typical yellow and white, but we also have some blue and pearly, etc. And then in this one, we have uh, a nice modifier gene that's causing all of the kernels that would look a uh, much brighter color uh, to, to make them all a little dull. And so there are lots of genes that are involved in corn phenotypes. Um, for example, some of the phenotypes are just really small cobs. Um, this is a blue type, a blue type of popcorn that I grew in my uh, backyard a while back. And um, I actually grew some more corn this year that has more of these phenotypes in it. But um, it, I planted it a little bit too late and it hasn't actually made corn yet. So I have a couple corn babies that um, hopefully before the end of the semester I'll be able to show you. Now, this experiment deals with specific phenotypes of corn, and we're going to follow those phenotypes through um, both monohybrid and dihybrid crosses. So, for example, we are using a corn cob that is a solid yellow phenotype, and this is actually an absence of pigment. And so the corn that we typically see in the grocery store and eat is a, um, a recessive type of corn that has um, a nice golden color, and so we usually associate corn with the nice golden color, but that's actually not the wild type of corn. This is a, a bread type of corn, a bread phenotype, that um, uh, looks more appealing and it looks corn colored, um, and that's what people prefer to see in the grocery store. But, in fact, this is actually the wild type color of corn, this nice dark red uh, pigmented corn. And so the pigment is in a structure in the, in the individual kernels called the alurone. And you'll see that in the text of your, um, of your lab handout. So in this co cob, we have a red alurone or purple or, or whatever color uh, you think of uh, when you see that. I call it pigmented because it has pigment. And then we have a non-pigmented variety, which is what uh, we would typically call yellow, but that's just because there's no red to cover up the yellow. So we're gonna be working with these two as the parentals. So we have our nice parental pigmented versus non-pigmented type. And if you actually follow that cross in a monohybrid cross, and uh, this is a little bit hard to see because of the plastic, so I'm gonna take the plastic off. We have our cross right here. So we have our two parentals, we have our dark pigmented parental, we have our non-pigmented parental, and when we cross those two parentals, just like in any uh, monohybrid cross, we wind up with a hybrid generation, and that hybrid generation will look all like, 100% like one of the parents, and that's what we come up with as the dominant uh, phenotype. And so that's where we see our dominant phenotype here is the pigmented. And then we take the pigmented hybrids, we cross those, and we get our F2 generation, which is down here. And hopefully you can see that it's a nice mix of both pigmented and non-pigmented kernels. And maybe um, if you counted them, you would actually see that it's uh, closer to a three to one ratio because this is a monohybrid cross. Now in a monohybrid cross, um, Typically, we are looking at the F2 generation and kind of interpreting our way back. And so what we're doing in this lab is we're taking the results of that F2 generation at the bottom, and we are going to um, count the kernels and see if they do, in fact, follow that 3 to 1 ratio. So an example of an F2 generation would be this cob. In this cob, you can kind of see, like the one in the box, has a lot of red kernels or pigmented kernels and some of the yellow kernels here and there, the non-pigmented type. So we're actually gonna count the offspring. Now this cob represents hundreds of offspring. That's a lot to count. And so we're actually gonna take a sample from a cornfield and so from the entire cornfield where this cross was accomplished, we're gonna take a small sample that I have already pre-made. 
And so this sample should reflect pretty much what's going on here. Now an alternative of what could be happening is something called a test cross. And a test cross is where you have the same parents but in the F1 generation, instead of crossing, instead of a self-cross where you cross a hybrid to a hybrid, you cross a hybrid to a parental and specifically the recessive parental. And once you get at the bottom down here would be a different proportion of offspring. And those offspring are going to be more equally distributed because you had one parent that was a, double res uh, that was a recessive. And so that cob would look more like this cob, although this is a really old cob. Um, you can see that it has a more equal distribution of yellow and red in comparison to the monohybrid cross with a three to one ratio. So this is what we're actually testing for when we are counting our offspring. So in the very first, um, uh, the very first experiment for the monohybrid cross, what you would do is you would take your sample, and I have a sample for all of the groups. And obviously, you're not gonna be able to count these yourself. I'll make some room here. But the procedure would be just basically taking the kernels, and you can't see that in that video, it's kind of off screen. But you would take those kernels, and what you would do is you would sort them according to whether they are pigmented or non-pigmented. And you can use the parents as a guide to help you figure out and count your individual kernels. Now I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me count all these kernels. So I'm going to count them for you, and then we'll come back to the next segment, which is the dihybrid cross.